Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the All Around Growth Podcast. This is episode number 251. My name is Rob Kaiser, and I am your host. This is a show that provides insight and tools to building the life and homestead of your dreams. Like I said, it's Wednesday, December 23rd, and... And uh, and I lost my train of thought, ladies and gentlemen. But that's okay. It's been a long, it's been a long day, and today is going to be a a bit of a free talk episode, just a, a catch up episode. We're going to talk about some functional health. We're going to talk about the holidays. And how we do them here on the homestead. Maybe that will give you some ideas on how to do holidays on yours if you were to decide to implement some change into your own life and homestead as well. So let's get into it. Um, this may be a little bit of a longer episode than normal. I'm not sure. But I wanted to record something today. I alluded to that back on Monday. And after some running around this afternoon, I wanted to get back to at least somewhere where I know I am. (laughs) So I don't get lost. And uh, I'm trying to navigate my way around while talking amongst ourselves right so as soon as I make this turn I will get into it here and um, yeah it's been uh, it's been a long a long day yesterday was the solstice and as I do every quarter or at least I try to do every quarter and have done for the past couple of years now do an extended fast and admittedly I blew it on the first the first night of my fast I I tried to begin on Sunday and it was a successful day but I I guess I kind of don't remember I woke up in the middle of the night and had a snack of pecans I had a handful of pecans Damn, they're good. And, um, yeah, that was it. So I started over again on Monday. Went through Monday. I actually blew it Sunday, Saturday night, too, with a handful of cons. So Saturday and Sunday night was two blown evenings of, of, uh, <laughs> of pecans. I was going to start Sunday. Anyways, fasted Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday with the exception of the pecan incident and had a bit of a celebratory feast on Tuesday evening late into the night. First fire of the season in my wood stove. Granted, it wasn't too cold, but in the whole spirit of the Yule Log and the solstice and getting in touch with nature on the the journey of the feast, that is how the solstice went. So, I decided to take the day off yesterday and do all of this in silence, not listening to any music, not listening to any devices, not really tuning into much of anything at all, just having a day to focus, read, write, reflect, contemplate, and do some deep cleaning of my little office at the homestead. Today, I slept in late from the celebratory evening last night 
and quite frankly had a relaxing morning. Catching up, doing some email, some tasks. And I had to go up to the big city today for another appointment, follow-up appointment, second time I have seen Dr. Michael Siciliano of the functional medicine department at the Cleveland Clinic. My first appointment was September 8th, if I'm not mistaken. And in a nutshell, I was suggested that I go on a grain-free elimination diet with a supplementation protocol. And that supplementation protocol began only after I was able to complete the previously prescribed course of antibiotics and something else by the gastroenterologist that I was previously seeing, all of which led up to my journey into functional medicine. So I've basically been on this diet, this grain-free elimination diet for a little over two months. I've been on this whole supplementation protocol for about a month now. We reviewed all lab work and all blood work and stool samples that were submitted, saliva samples that were submitted for adrenal stress testing. The whole gamut of everything that can be done in terms of checking, monitoring, and testing one's health, including testosterone panels and anything and everything that, that we could possibly think of. On the good side, I am thinking more clearly. I'm thinking in a much more how do, I, how do I explain this? I feel like the clarity of my thought is there. Not to say that it wasn't earlier, but maybe brain fog was a good way to explain the way that I had been feeling. I just didn't know that I had been feeling that way because I didn't know I had uh, the, I, had, I had not experienced anything other than that for such a long period of time. That was my normal. It's almost like I take a medication called Depakote, right, for my seizures. And it's not a good medicine. I was taking a high dose when I first moved out to California, and this doctor was like, Whoa, dude, this, medica this, this medication is not good for you, bro. Like, let's get you off of this stuff. Put you on this other stuff that's a lot better for you. A lot less toxic and a lot less harsh on your liver, man. It's going to be a lot more mellow. So I was like, right on. And I did. And changed it up and apparently Depakote has a negative impact on your cognitive functioning unbeknownst to me and for the first time in my life I thought clearly it was fucking awesome but unfortunately, that medication alone wasn't entirely effective. And I was having more 
petite mal seizures, a, a different kind of seizures, along with absence seizures. So we went back to the prior protocol, or basically began a hybrid of both while living in California. And uh, to make a long story short, that is sort of the only analogy that I have to feeling something different on this diet, not to mention the quality of my bowel movements, but hey, look, we'll save that for another time, and likely we won't get into it at all, at least on the show. If you're really interested, check it out. <laughs> we can talk about it in the Telegram chat or something at t.me slash allaroundgrowth, but uh, I don't really think anyone is that interested in it. However, that is a metric that is used in health because... Uh, well, what goes in must come out, and um, and a stool sample was something that I submitted as well as a saliva sample to measure a stress complex and all of the blood work that I had done. Nothing really... Um, of major concern came back in my blood work except some some things regarding my pancreas and not quite sure what's up with that but that isn't anything new and I think it has some ties to my gastrointestinal system still being or well being out of whack because these panels were drawn in September and that was before I really began any of the changes that I've made. So, um, with the stool sample, what's interesting, uh, we reviewed the results, and this is not something that I'd seen. Um, yet, but it looks like there are two primary issues that have been identified as out of balance in my body based on my stool sample. One, one is mold, okay? And the other is, um, well, there was something with, uh, like, Omega, omega oils and the balance of them, the ratio of them, if, if you will, not being uh, processed and digested properly. And what, was the, what, what else was it? Jesus Christ. Um, well, maybe it'll come to me, maybe it won't. Oh, a parasite. That's right. Oh, man. That's right, everybody. Okay. Yeah, so apparently there is some, some mold of some kind in my life and a parasite. So I've got some things to learn about there. And... Apparently, I will be taking a course of medicine, a course of drugs, in one dose to knock out this parasitic thing that's going on in my guts. And I will be taking a, a few different supplements and some herbal things. And that's, that seems to be the course now is is uh, a lot of what is being tweaked and tapered after months of a strict diet and healing is the, the removal of certain 
supplements that are no longer necessary or the addition of other supplements and not the entire removal but but the uh, the combination of of supplements and this is this is really this is really an interesting take on all things medicine from from my past experience and i feel very good about it um i have more tests to take i have some some urine test to take to uh to verify this mold uh, re lab result and I have some uh, some additional uh, lab work to be done to verify a couple of these other test results with regard to questionable pancreatic activity that may be taking place in my body that may be linked to my gastrointestinal system which is linked to your brain there is a tremendous uh, corollary between your guts and your brain I, I knew that to a certain extent I did not know the full extent until I began this process of functional medicine and quite a process it has been <clears throat> when I left the, the, the Cleveland Clinic up in the big city And um, I decided to have a celebratory, celebratory meal. Oh, before I get into the meal aspect of things, I'm now going to consult back with the nutritionist, the dietitian that I've been working with, that initially prescribed the grain-free elimination diet to me in conjunction with the doctor along with some additional supplements not necessarily sup not necessarily supplements but like collagen proteins and just some well yeah I guess supplements things that the doctor did not necessarily prescribe but things that I could take to optimize my health. So I've, I've really I've really gone gone in on the, the supplements and keeping my diet clean over the past few months. So I will be contacting them to see what I can be reintroducing to my diet and I'm hope I'm hoping that it's going to be uh, beef and eggs. Pork too, you know. We we can get those back. That would be great. But in all honesty, um, I'm not I'm not dying eating salmon, chicken, and lamb, and uh, some bison. It's really it's okay, uh, especially since we've got a great chicken connection. But um, I figured that since we're going into the holidays. And I am going to be eating some food that I normally don't eat. And I did last night a little bit on the solstice. I'll probably have some wine on Christmas Eve with family. Probably have a cookie or two, maybe some chocolates. 
Um, there's a number of Vietnamese places up in the city. And when I lived out west, one of my favorite things to do on a Saturday morning that was, you know, after going to the beach or something, was to go to some little Vietnamese joint and, and just get a, just a classic bowl of pho. And I, I got I got spoiled on this just cheap bowls, cheap lunches. And um, I found a couple good places around. But over the years, when I first got back, I was really into this. And I was kind of scouting them out. And then I... And then a lot of things changed after the first few years back here. My, my entire life changed. And after... <clears throat> after a few years back here changed a lot as a matter of fact but that's another story for another time lots of other stories for other times here guys that's what that's what this is all about the story of my life leading into other stories for other times that well really haven't come yet Maybe they will, maybe they won't. We'll see what happens. Like I said, this is episode number 251 of the show. And the date is December 22nd, 2021. I haven't had some thoughts on the show. And, um,. Since I've got a little bit of time, I mean, the rest of the evening was relatively uneventful. I went to this Vietnamese restaurant. Eh, if I had to give it, uh, if I had to give it a, a rating of ten stars, the name of the restaurant will remain nameless. You can jump into the Telegram chat group t.me/allaroundgrowth for more details. But on rating of five scales if I had to rate it on Google's five star rating I would give it a three if I was going to say one to ten I'd give it a seven um, yeah not impressed uh, not just for a number of reasons, but whatever. Did a little, did a little shopping. Went to the thrift store and picked up a few things for myself for the holidays. And, uh, and that leads us here to the recording right here, right now. <clears throat> and one of the things that, kind of a concluding thought. One of the things that I've been thinking about is you know, monetizing this show, in a sense. And it's not just, you know, monetizing the podcast. I'm not looking to become like the next Joe Rogan or something. And a lot of the people I look at as podcast mentors have just started out doing a show to, you know, I don't I, I, you know. Well, I'm not going to sit around and tell you what the motives is and are of other people. Okay, I'm going to tell you what mine are. Now, this has been the story, basically the story of my life. Providing tools and resources on how to build the life and homestead of your dreams. Now, a lot of the talk, quite frankly, over the past year has been uh, negative and it has involved things that have made me upset and angry and I'm not real proud of a lot of the shows that uh, I, I talked about maybe even earlier leading up to that 
And that's why I went to the devotionals because these devotionals, The Rudder of the Day by Dan Miller, Strength for Today by J David Jeremiah, and 365 Dao by Deng Ming Dao. These three books, if I could read those and utilize those as fodder for discussion, it generally provided me with a framework for uplifting dialogue for the content of the day, and I want it to be consistent. And that gave me the ability to do so without stressing myself out about coming up with fresh content for the show and do so and deliver consistent content in a way that was consistent with what I wanted to do with the show, which is, you know, titled All Around Growth, about personal growth and development, building the life and homestead of our dreams. But because of the anger and some of the things that I wasn't so proud of, I didn't do a lot of promotion of the show and a lot of that lack of self-promotion was, was was done or not done if you will under the guise of wanting to see what would happen from organic growth now I didn't I I have spread the word about the podcast but primarily not on Facebook. There are people on Facebook that I'm like, ah, I don't know if I want them to listen to it. I don't know. You know, they're too much part of my life. You know, most of the audience that I interact with, you know, most of you guys are, 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 are newer, uh, newer components of my life. You know, we've, we've, Many of us have been in similar circles and have crossed paths with other people in those circles and, uh, you know, may know each other, friends of friends indirectly or something like that from years back, but us directing and interacting with one another, it's relatively new. You know, just like the show, the show really took wings in 2020 when the rest of the world was going to shit I decided to start building something so I guess we can do one of two things one thing is get off my ass and just start promoting the show and a way that maybe is a little bit more appropriate and I could do some research on that and proper show promotion and things like that and, and just do it. Or B, this is a little bit of a hat tip audience feedback to Andy who from day one is consistently throwing out good ideas for shows, show ideas, uh, audience feedback and I believe the title of the article that he shared was called uh, sn the snowballing your side hustles and in a, in a sense snowballing your hobbies turning your side hustles hobbies into side hustles I don't know. I'll see if I can link to it in the show notes. But it was like, it was an article about monetizing your hobbies. And I feel like it was from a legitimate source. Not legitimate enough that I noted it. Like, you know, Nick Loper or something like that from Side, Side Hustle Nation. But I thought that idea was, you know, super cool. Like, if you can monetize if you can start to learn how to monetize your hobbies like the things that you do for fun then you know 
then you're already on that track of creating passive streams of income. Now, the Buzzsprout platform, which I use for podcasting, now guys, I've said to that I've got to, and I'm again, I'm working on it. Give me, give me time. Be patient with me. And maybe that's another reason why I haven't done a whole lot of self promotion. I don't even have a legit website yet, so I, every it just directs to the Buzzsprout platform site, which isn't a big deal, but. You know, if I ever wanted to sell all-around growth merchandise or anything like that, it would just be nice to have. Be nice to have a podcast, a blog, everything on one site housed there. So, I, I just I've got to think this through and yada yada yada. Um, but I thought that one of the ways that I could do this is continue the podcast on Buzzsprout. Okay? Now, if if I do it for free, the podcasts are only up for 90 days or something, and then they're removed. And I could just say, hey, this is how it's going to be. And hopefully that would incentivize the audience because I don't know what I, you know, I, I, this costs me 25, 30 bucks a month to do uh, just for the hosting alone. So I'm signed up to be an Instacart affiliate. I support it. I use it. Why not promote it? Try to make a few bucks off it. I've done some affiliate links with some other things like best self journal admittedly their affiliate program isn't the best big affiliate for 48 days I push that a lot Um, I also have affiliate links for Nosby though I don't really push Nosby as much as I could or should and I've got some affiliate sales set up for some other things that I just haven't really set up and used yet. Much like my Buy Me A Coffee account, which is set up, but I have yet to really activate that and look into it. So maybe in the new year, I will try to get some traction going on that because chances are There are people out there who might want to support me, much like the people I've supported over the years and continue to do. So if you want to do so, you can check out the link in the show notes on Patreon. I'm going to... I think what it is right now is Patreon subscribers have the ability to do a Zoom call with me. But, like I said, that's something that I haven't really looked into a whole lot because uh, well, for a number of reasons. But you choose the excuse today. I won't. And one other thought that I had for the podcast was to do a rotating day, you know, for this, you know, do this for maybe the first couple months, January, February, and push the marketing, the sponsorship, and the affiliate links push the business aspect of it for a couple of months and see how that goes and see if I can make it work and while doing so try to put some additional content out there of my own focused on the seven goals or the seven aspects that we use to set goals for the year 2022 financial physical personal development, family, spiritual, social, and career. And that was 
waiting for my doctor's appointment today thinking about this that financial has been a big part of my life a big focus of my life for many years and once I got over that hurdle last year I was able to start focusing on my physical health my physical well-being finding balance in that personal development has kind of been all of the same all at the same time working with the 48 days eagles community learn more about that in the show notes as well and 2022 is going to be the year of the family for me spending more time working with my family working at the farmer's market every saturday trying to learn the craft and the trades from my parents, making soaps, hand creams, lotions, and sauerkrauts, other various fermented products. Q1, will also be family, Q2 uh, let me think about that guys I'd have to I'd have to reference my journal but let me work backwards Q4 is going to be a focus on social Q3 is going to be a with 2023 being career, social, Q3 being, uh, uh, okay, like I said, guys, it's been a long day, but the way I journaled this was like financial, 2022 is, is family, Q1, two, spiritual, I'm planning a spiritual retreat this year uh, there's a lot coming up and guys I'm just I'm kind of tired it is what time is it oh, it's like 8 30 it's been a long day you gotta get home take the dog out and uh, feed him I'm sure he is gonna be happy to see me it's been a long afternoon for Toby and I'm curious guys for those of you who listen do you know why my dog is named Toby if you do let me know hit me up on the Facebook group make a post in the Facebook group comment on one of the posts that you saw this on social media let me know in the telegram group itself t.me slash all around growth and yeah if you, if you know where my dog's name came from you get a special special surprise uh, I'm not sure what that surprise is, but uh, we can negotiate on that, huh? Oh boy. All right. It's been real, guys, but that's it for now. If we don't catch it before the holidays, I wish you and your family a very Merry Christmas. I hope that you enjoy this time with your loved ones. I hope that you have some time for yourself. So that we can all remember what's truly important in this life. 
Look forward to talking with you on the next episode. This is Rob Kaiser, and thank you.